in this video we would look into what is signal energy what is signal power and we would also deliberate on some of the examples on how we can find energy and power for a specific problem to understand the concept of signal energy and signal power let us look into a very basic and simple uh, circuit element that is resistor so we have a resistor of r ohms and then there's a current passing through it i of t and the potential difference across this resistor is simply v of t so in order to quantify this circuit element we might be interested in finding the instantaneous power that is p of t which is simply vi and both uh, v and i are function of time and hence the instantaneous power is also a function of time so from ohm's law we can say p of t is equal to v square of t by r so the total energy expended over time say we are interested in time t1 to t2 so the total energy in this time is simply integration of power p of t with respect to time dt so that is this is equivalent to 1 by or t1 to t2 v square of t dt so this is the total energy in interval t1 to t2 but if we are interested in the average power So that would be equivalent to 1 over t2 minus t1 p of t dt and simply i'm just going to write that t1 t2 v square of t dt and then we have 1 by r over here so for simplicity we would assume that the resistor is actually a 1 ohm resistor so this would enable us to get rid of this variable r we would normalize it so hence the total energy would be v square of t dt now this is a specific kind of a signal v of t that is a voltage but this signal could be any signal so let us generalize it and say the energy is simply from t1 to t2 x of t where dt right so this is the energy over a time interval from t1 to t2 so this is our energy from t1 to t2 that is the time interval so say that time interval starts from minus infinity and goes to infinity so this would give us e infinity or the energy in infinite interval of time so that we can express as e infinity this is equivalent to minus infinity to infinity x of t absolute whole square dt so where i have used x of t absolute whole square because the signal can be real as well as complex right for complex say z is equal to a plus iota b so taking a square absolute square means that this is simply z multiplied by z conjugate that would be a plus iota b times a minus iota b and this would simply be a square plus b square and rest of the terms would cancel off so that's why we have written x of t absolute square for real cases this would simply be x square of t so the time averaged power over an infinite interval of time can be derived from this expression so that is p infinity this is equivalent to limit t tends to infinity 1 over 2t minus t to t x of t absolute square dt so in both the cases the total energy over here time interval has been extended from minus infinity to infinity and we obtain this first major result and secondly this t1 to t2 they have been extended from minus infinity because of this limit to plus infinity and this is our second major result so e infinity and p infinity but do note that not all signals can be classified as energy signals and power signals for example if we have a ramp signal so this 
ramp signal can neither be classified as an energy signal nor as a power signal so why is it so the reason is because this continuously increasing signal can neither be quantified using e infinity nor it can be obtained using p infinity so this is neither uh, energy nor power so e infinity and p infinity are used for the understanding and characterization of different types of signals now let us look into some key expressions for both continuous time signals and discrete time signals that is ct and dt for total energy e infinity and total power that is p infinity so for continuous time signal as we have discussed pre previously x of t is any given signal so if you take the absolute square of it and you integrate from minus infinity to infinity so then you're going to get, uh, find e infinity so on the other hand for discrete time signals the integration would convert to uh, a summation and the summation is starting from minus infinity to infinity and then again we're taking the absolute square of a discrete signal x of n right it's almost similar for continuous time as well as for the discrete time signals and this would also uh, relate to total power that is for continuous time uh, previously we derived that it is limit t tends to infinity 1 over 2t minus time period t to t x of t whole square dt right so this is for continuous time and its counterpart in the discrete time is again we have a limit but now from t we are getting a capital n integer for discrete time right and x of t is converted to x of n that we have consistently used for discrete time signals and we're going to use in the remainder of the course so rest of the things are almost similar uh, rather than integration now we have a summation and uh, the denominator is 1 over 2n plus 1. So the total power is actually a very powerful tool when we are quantifying or characterizing periodic signals. So we can take a time period and based on that we can measure its uh, power that is p infinity. So just as a quick example, for example if we have a signal say x of t and this is a signal so if we are going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity this is going to give us this area so say this area is equivalent to 2 that is our e infinity is equivalent to 2 so if this is equivalent to 2 so on the other hand for the same signal if we find the power so the power would be this thing would be simply e infinity and because this relates to this part of our p infinity but then this is divided by 2t and then we have a limit where t tends to infinity so if this is 2 and t is approaching infinity so this would mean that it is 2 by infinity and hence this would be equal to 0 so what this means is that if we have a finite value for e infinity p infinity would be zero and on the other hand if we have a finite value say say we have this graph which is periodic and you find the power of this one and say the power is four for example if the power is four then what would be its energy if the energy was finite the power is zero and if the power is finite then energy would be infinite this is basically the two cases that we have and they relate both to continuous time as well as discrete time signals now let us look into three examples that i have extracted out from the textbook which is from oppenheim and wilski so in these three examples specifically in the first example we have x1 of t which is equivalent to e raised to the power minus 2 t u of t and we are asked to find e infinity and p infinity for this signal right first and foremost is that e infinity is equivalent to the square and integration of x1 of t right so what we're going to do is we're going to take the square of this signal if we take the square of this signal so we would have e raised to power minus 4t which is appearing over here times u of t right initially the integration was starting from minus infinity to infinity but by multiplying with the unit step function which is simply something like this it is starting at zero and it would be going until infinity anything less than zero is multiplied by a zero so it would be cancelled e minus 2 of t 
is hence cancelled from zero and prior to that so therefore we have an integration which is starting from zero and going onward to infinity because of this unit step function so from here we have subsumed u of t into the limits of integration next we have just solved the integration that is minus 1 by 4 e minus 4 t and the integration limit is from infinity 0 to infinity right and by solving this we obtained 1 by 4 right in the same way we can find p infinity and note that p infinity is over here limit t tends to infinity 1 over 2t times e infinity but since e infinity is a constant value therefore if this is constant and then we are dividing by an infinite value so eventually we would have p infinity equal to zero so this also uh, agrees with our previous statement in which we said that if e infinity is finite then p infinity is zero let us look into the second example second example is x2 of t which is equivalent to e j 2t plus pi by 4 so this is an exponential signal and also it is complex because you can see j or i uh, appearing over here so first and foremost what we do is we try to understand this function and for that i have used an euler's identity over here which is e j theta say this is theta right so e j theta is equivalent to cos theta plus j sine theta this is expressed over here so but for the signal power or for the signal energy we are interested in finding the square of this signal so absolute square is expressed over here but since this is a complex signal so for complex or the square of a complex signal is simply the signal multiplied by the conjugate of itself so this is expressed in this equality next uh, x2 of t is expressed over here so x2 of t and x2 conjugate of t right so x2 of t from here is cos theta plus j sine theta which is appearing over here and x2 conjugate of t just plus would convert to minus and this is over here so if you multiply these two terms so eventually you will get cos squared theta plus sine squared theta and that is equivalent to one from trigonometric property so we have some uh, summarized or simplified the square of x2 of t the absolute value of that to simply one right so we got rid of all the arguments and all those terms so let us look into the e infinity and p infinity of it so e infinity is from minus infinity to infinity x square of t dt but we know that x square of t is simply one right so we have uh, a function which is something like if this is the values so it is continuously one so if you're going to integrate this one so the output would be infinity so this is uh, the reason that e infinity for this specific case is actually infinity next let us look into p infinity and for that limit t tends to infinity 1 over 2t and again the function x square of t is over here which is 1 if we solve this uh, integration so we would have simply t from minus t to t and eventually solving this this 2t would cancel with this 2t and eventually you would have 1 right this gives us the second case that is if p infinity is having a finite value then this would mean that e infinity is infinite so this is actually vice versa if e infinity is finite p infinity is zero on the other hand if p infinity is finite then e infinity is infinity next in x3 of t we are looking into a pure sinusoid which is a very fundamental function in signals and systems so in x3 of t if we going to take square of it so we would have cos square of t right so from trigonometric properties cos square of t is equivalent to 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cos 2t right? this is written over here 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cos 2t that is the frequency is actually doubled right plus you have an offset now from here we can find e infinity and p infinity first we have an e infinity over here that is the integration limit from minus infinity to infinity x3 square of t dt right and from this trigonometric property we have expanded this integration uh, as follows so in the first part that is minus infinity to infinity 1 by 2 dt you can observe that this is a function in time which is actually valid from minus infinity to infinity and it has a magnitude of half right so if you find the area under this that would also be infinity 
right so this means that this part is equivalent to infinity and regardless of the second term the eventual output will become infinity itself for p infinity let me uh, use this space so now we have p infinity which is divided into two terms this is the first term and then that is summed with the second terms over here so note that over here if you simplify uh, this integration so you would eventually have 1 by 2 t minus t to t and this would be same as if and again you would have 1 by 2 times 2t so this 2t would cancel with this 2t and hence the output of this term is actually equal to 1 by 2 now let us look into the second term and an easy way is to visualize it for visualization you know that cos function which is this function is something like this right so if we are finding the integration over a certain time period say we start from here and we eventually go to this time period this t is the time period right so if we go until here so all the above lobes would cancel with the lower lobes the upper lobe would cancel with the lower lobes eventually the overall area would be equal to zero so that is in this case the area is equal to zero so this means that this whole term is equivalent to zero so hence our p infinity is equivalent to one by two so this is again the same example that if we have a finite power we would have an infinite energy